Today's video is all about how to hold the neck of the violin. Now, the left hand is um, the one that holds the neck, obviously, and when we put the violin on our shoulder, we play with the left hand. Um, now, the question really is, what should we do with the thumb? So, a lot of my students often struggle to reach some of the notes, particularly with the third and fourth fingers up here um, and the reason why is because they are squeezing the neck so we naturally want to squeeze the neck when we play and what I mean by that is this so if you can see here I have my index finger on one side of the neck and my thumb on the other side of the neck and I'm pressing here into the neck now this isn't what you should do this is the incorrect but most common uh, mistake that students of the violin make so when you put your first finger down, that's not going to be that easy when we're squeezing the neck. Second finger is pretty easy. Third and fourth finger are where they struggle. Now, if you're squeezing the neck, the third and fourth finger will probably not reach the notes that you want to reach. So let's show you. Now I'm really having to stretch my finger there. I've, I've reached the note, but it's not easy. It's really not easy. The reason why is because I'm squeezing the neck. Now, if I free up the hand away from the neck like this, then all my fingers can reach any note they like. I can even go right up here if I want. So when I was squeezing the neck, the fourth finger was a real stretch. And, you know, if you are struggling with the fourth finger and you're one of those people that avoids the fourth finger, um, probably it's because you're squeezing the neck. Now, the position of the knuckle should actually be above the uh, the fingerboard not below the fingerboard. So a lot of people, you know, they naturally squeeze the neck, the knuckles down here. So what you should really be doing um, is raising the knuckle above the fingerboard. Now, if you try to do this while squeezing the neck, you just won't be able to do it. You'll get something like that. And then that means that the back of your wrist will squeeze in towards the instrument. Now, if you've been learning for a while with a decent teacher, you'll know that the back of the wrist has to be in alignment with the rest of the arm. Um, the wrist, shouldn't be uh, tense, we shouldn't be squeezing in at all, um, but it should be in alignment with the rest of the arm. So we just jump up so I can show you. My entire arm is so straight that you could put a ruler down the back of it and it wouldn't really impact the movement. If you're finding you're doing that, then you're probably squeezing the neck like this. So what is the correct placement of the thumb? Let me just show you. So when you hold your violin, first of all, you need to check that the shoulder rest is in the right position and the chin rest is in the right position. Very cheap violins, uh, or not very cheap violins, almost all violins come with a very, very high sort of lump here. Now that is the standard shoulder rest. Now all of my students get sent back to the shop and asked to purchase one of these flat ones because the chin needs to rest on here without feeling that sort of upward push that the, the, the lumpy chin rests will uh, push into the jaw essentially and cause you jaw pain. So if you're finding this bit hurts and look at the chin rest. This one cost me about five pounds, I think nine pounds, including someone to fit it from a local violin shop. Your local violin shop will have them. You can also have a look online um, at different chin wrists, but make sure there's a flat one here. I'll try and find one and put it into the description so you've got a you've got a link but I bought this from Turner Violins in Beast and Nottingham which is fantastic if you live local to the area. Um, okay so you have to have the shoulder rest in the correct position. Now again this will vary according to your body type but the fat side of the shoulder rest they're all they all have a fat side and a thin side um, is also the inverted side should be positioned roughly I have mine about half a centimeter away from the feet of the chin rest here. Um, this one slipped a little bit today. And then the other side for me is slightly higher. Um, you'll also have to adjust the feet to make sure that they are the right height for you. To know whether you have the correct size, you should be able to do this with no arms. So I've got no arms. I'm holding this in place simply with the weight of my head, which is heavy and we all have a heavy head as you're sure you'll be aware um sitting on the chin rest 
and that is the weight that holds it in place. Now my shoulder blades here should be relaxed and letting gravity pull them down, not hunching up like that. If you're hunching up like that, then you've got a problem here and you need to look at the setup for this and adjust it until you can do this. If you have a cheap shoulder rest, you probably won't be able to get it into the right, the right place. I use Kuhn Solo, K-U-N Solo, S-O-L-O. -O. I'll put the link to that in the description. Generally, that's a really good one size fits all, unless you're particularly tall or particularly short in the neck. Um, sometimes that goes with the body as well. Then you'll have to look at something different. Um, but in general, the Kuhn Solo is a really good standard for everybody. One size fits all. You can adjust it. To, to fit you um, these lower and raise as does this side here and they also go in and out as well um, but yeah that's that's the subject for another video so if you have the setup correct you should be able to hold it in place with no arms look no arms <laughs> okay so then what to do with the thumb so if you realize now that the, the violin isn't going to fall on the floor most people squeeze the neck because they have a subconscious fear that if they don't squeeze the neck their violin's going to drop on the floor like that if they are if they are uh, not squeezing it now that's actually a myth so if this is in the correct place you should be able to simply place the thumb underneath the instrument like this as though it was just a table um you know if the violin was lying on the table the table wouldn't be squeezing it it would simply just be there so that is kind of your security if you need to remove your chin from the chin rest See, I'm not squeezing it, but the violin stays on my shoulder. So if you really want security that the violin is not going to fall on the floor if you do it this way and don't squeeze the neck, here is proof. Okay, so put your chin back on there. And then where does the thumb go? Now, everybody has a different shaped hand and a different kind of thumb. Mine is not double jointed, so mine just sticks right up like this. So if, if you have a double jointed thumb, i.e. one that bends backwards very easily, um, mine doesn't. Um, then you will probably find that that your thumb will naturally bend backwards as you do this and that's okay provided it's not tense or pushing into the instrument um, you can also kind of bend it slightly like that so it doesn't lock um, which often helps people with double jointed thumbs um, and then just sort of sit it on the instrument like this um, I probably would think this would be slightly better than, than bent back. But if you have a thumb like mine, then this will be directly relevant to you. We all have different thumbs. We all have different hands. Um, again, the size of your hand also matters. I have quite large, large hands for a, for a woman, but a man would have bigger hands than me. So a man may find that, that their thumb sits in a slightly different place to mine. Also would a woman with smaller hands than me. So where does mine go? I put my thumb roughly in the nape of the neck so there you go underneath the instrument sometimes it comes up and round a bit but i never ever have it above the fingerboard or squeezing the neck some people do prefer this and that's okay provided you're not squeezing i have no problem with this particularly if you're a man and you have larger hands you may find that you need you need to have it wrapped around because it simply doesn't fit here without you squeezing in here um, and we, we don't want that this this bit here should always remain open nice and open now the shape that i use is this so it's effectively like a letter c with a straight bit at the bottom or you can have it slightly curled if you want but the natural thing that the majority of people that come to me start off with is this because they're squeezing the neck if you see that your hand looks like that when you're playing then you need to open up the joint there so We've talked about stretches in previous videos. This stretch in particular, um, simply doing that. Um, this one's really good as well. Uh, it's a bit like a yoga mudra. Opening up that joint just to get it used to being open. If it's not used to it, then it will probably find that a bit weird and you'll get a huge stretch in there if you've never done this before in particular. And you can do the other side as well to keep them balanced. This kind of stretching is really good. So. Going back to the thumb position, so once you've got your shape, so this is the shape, um, your fingers round like that and the thumb just underneath, again, not squeezing up like that, but simply open like that. Here we go, I have my thumb under the instrument, it's acting like a table, so I'm not pushing upwards here, I'm simply just being, my thumb is just there, 
and it's the muscles in my arm which is holding the arm in place and the thumb in place I'm not pushing upwards and I am allowing the gravity the gravitational force of our beautiful mother earth to do its work which is to let the violin sit on my shoulder and on my thumb right now and my shoulder isn't pushing up it's nice and relaxed and the thumb isn't pushing up either so that way with the thumb in the nape of the neck here it gives you a lot more freedom to reach these notes up in the higher positions and the other part is if you're squeezing you won't even be able to change position so if you're a new starter you might not know what i mean by changing position yet but when you're playing higher up the violin that oh i haven't done my bow up today um when you're playing higher up the violin you need to be able to move relatively easy without the thumb squeezing the neck. If your thumb is squeezing the neck, you will go It will move really slowly. So one way to check if your thumb is in a good position and isn't squeezing the neck is simply to do this. The thumb should remain roughly one inch behind the index finger in all positions. So in the first position, as you can see here, um, my thumb is roughly one inch behind my first finger, which is currently on the A string in the position of B. Um, now, if you're in third position, again, the same thing should be one inch behind the first finger. Same for the higher positions. Now, when you get into the really high positions, then the thumb kind of parks itself in the other nape of the neck, which is this curly bit here. Um, and then you then at that point you are allowed to bend your wrist in order to reach the higher notes. So, so watch here. Um, wish is straight. It's it's aligned. As I go into the higher positions. Then the wrist does bend. However, we shouldn't be touching the instrument. So you may have to bring your left arm sort of around the side of the upper bout. So first position, I've got my arm hanging down. As I move into the higher positions, I move my arm around the upper bout like this. So the thumb is still not squeezing the instrument. That is the key thing. Um, Something else I want to delve into a little bit here is why the knuckle needs to be above the fingerboard. So the fingerboard, when you're in first position, it's not so important. But when you go into the third and fourth fingers, so first and second finger, the third and fourth finger, you should adjust your left arm position to play the higher notes like this. So I bring the left arm up and around to the right. A bit like when we went round the upper bout, there's a movement which brings the left, oh, I need to stand further back, the left arm. So from that position, it moves up and around to reach the third and fourth fingers. And then my knuckle is, as you can see here, above the fingerboard to reach first finger. Second finger, slight shift. Third finger, fourth finger, even greater shift. So you have a different position for every string and every finger. Um, when you're playing the lower strings, this will be more pronounced because you actually have to bring your left arm up and around to reach the lower string anyway. <laughs> of moved over to my right um, or your left as you're looking at it so when we're in first position on the E string we're in my left arm is pretty much hanging down from the neck of the violin and allowing gravity just to let it sit there and my thumb my left thumb is it kind of on the side of the instrument but also still in the nape of the neck but when I'm in first position on the G string then I have to shift 
the, the, right, the left arm around so that I can reach the notes whilst keeping an upright finger. So this is the ideal shape for a violin finger, not that. If you're hitting the note with the middle of the, the paddy bit, then you've got it wrong. You should be trying to aim for as close to the nail as you can get as close to the nail. If your nails are long, then especially you ladies, I'm afraid your nails have to be this short. Even this is a couple of days old. So if my nails get any longer than the tip of my finger, when it's compressed down, uh, then it will stop it from being able to stand upright and you'll have problems with tuning and problems with vibrato as well. Okay, so... <clears throat> This is going on for slightly longer than I anticipated, but here you go. I'm an online violin teacher, so I'm used to just talking for an hour to people about one topic. Um, uh, so, the thumb position. There is a different thumb position, a different arm position for every single note, and you need to be able to train yourself to get used to that so that you can do it fluently. One way of doing that is to be very conscious of it when you're practicing your scales um, and doing it very slowly and consciously. So. The thumb, in essence, should never be squeezing the neck. Neither should this side of the index finger be squeezing the neck. There should always be space between the left hand and the left neck. If you're not sure, pull away from the neck like this to make sure that you free up the hand. Now we don't play like this, but this is just to check that it's, it's not squeezing the neck. And then when you bring it back again, just check that your wrist isn't pointing out. So, Bring it back into alignment when you bring it back. So pull it away. You can point the wrist out at this point because we're trying to kind of extend, extend the hand as far away from the neck as it will go. And then we bring it back in again into alignment. And that's how you find the correct position. So for first finger on the G string, you can see here my thumb is right under the center of the neck. The paddy part is touching the center. fourth fingers in particular, second finger a little bit, but my second finger is quite long so it's not really a problem. We, we need to bring the right arm around to the right even further. So, so if we're in a higher position on the G string, then that's even more pronounced than it is on the E string. See here, I'm not touching the upper belt. My left arm is really twisted right underneath the instrument. Um, so I've got freedom to play vibrato. So a lot of people, when they go into the higher positions, their hand touches the side of the instrument, suddenly they can't do vibrato anymore. This is why it has to be free. And it's all about these muscles here. So you need to be able to practice this movement. This is a massive movement in the left hand. So if you can keep the hand in the same shape all the time, this is the shape. And you have to adjust your arm accordingly so that you can keep this shape. If your fingers start to collapse like that, then you'll probably need to adjust the arm to bring it around. Now, I know that there is a lot more I could say on this topic. It takes years to sort of develop your technique in the violin sometimes, depending how often you practice and for how long for. Um, if you are interested in booking online lessons with me, I've been teaching online now since March and I've been teaching in person since 2016. I'm very comfortable teaching online. It really doesn't make an awful lot of difference for me. If you have any technical issues that you'd like to correct and you want to have a more in-depth ses session where I can have a look at your position of your left arm in particular, or we can look at your right hand if you're having problems with that, I will do a video on that later then get in touch. My email address is below. Um, it's theviolincoach at gmail.com. Not very hard to remember. Uh, my name is Ursula Almashari. I'm a professional violinist and I'm a violin teacher. I've performed in excess of uh, a thousand times all over Europe, all over the UK, mainly at weddings. Um, I play at Asian weddings and I specialise in Indian classical um, Bollywood music, improvisation, this kind of thing. So I am Western classically trained. Um, so I do know 
the Western classical music as well and pr primarily that's what people come to me for but I do teach people how to improvise, how to play jazz, how to play Indian cl classical, Bollywood, all these styles. Um, I'll be releasing more videos but please do subscribe if you want to get more information from me about the physical and emotional and psychological challenges of learning the world's most difficult instrument, the most glorious, beautiful instrument in the world, the violin. Thank you very much, have a great day, hope you're enjoying lockdown, take care, please subscribe.